January 23rd, 2024, Old Colony Planning Council Personnel Committee meeting to order. Um, at this point, I'd like to read the accessibility statement. Um, this meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Microphones or telephones will be used by all speakers. Large print materials are available upon advance request. If you'd like either of these accommodations, please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833. A notice of non-discrimination rights and protections to beneficiaries with regard to federal Title VI non-discrimination protections and state non-discrimination protections is posted in this meeting room and is available on the Old Colony Planning Council website. Please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833 for more information. Thank you. Okay. And can we have a roll call, Mary? Yes. Uh, Chairman Santusonio. Um, present. Christine Joy. Present. Lee Hartman. Present. Becky Coletta. Present. And just for the record, um, we have Charles Kilmer. We have um, Megan Fournier. And we have um, Brenda Robinson, Brenda Robinson <laughs> and Mary Waldron. I've only had half a cup of coffee today. This is not uh, this is not a good start. <laughs> we do have a quorum, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, at this point, I think we need to have have, have an action item, or we need to um, approve the uh, meeting from the October 18, 2023 Personal Committee meeting minutes. Um, do we have any questions on that, or do we, can we vote to accept? I would move to accept the minutes of the October 18th, 2023 Personnel Committee meeting. I'll second the motion. Okay. We have a roll call, Mary. Yes, yeah. Chairman Santosonio. Accept. Christine Joy. Yes, accept. Lee Hartman. Accept. And Rebecca Coletta. Accept. It was unanimous. Okay, okay on to, um, I think we were just at the meeting. The minute the numbers and numbering is out of order, so we're going to go into I think it's actually number five review of the personnel. Um, we are, we are. Thank you for for catching that. Yeah. Um, so Megan, can you just scroll up on the um, handbook? So um, there was a number of items that were kind of left um, for us to do a little bit more research on. One was the parking stipend. Um, I had the the request was for me to reach out to the city. Um, I have really not done that quite yet, but I plan to do so over the next month. Some of the things that we've been dealing with have been more security related. So that's on a to-do list. The um, the one that has the, um, the the biggest sort of a interest from the staff that was in our parking lot was the idea of the holidays. Um, and when we reviewed last time, we were following the state regulations as it related. Um, so at one point, the state said that if the holiday landed on a Saturday, that um, the Friday is a working day, but then there were some contractual things and it got a little confusing. So we are making the recommendation, um, there's twofold here. Sorry, do I have this right? I've got a couple things that are placed here. My apologies, I'm looking at. Um, so the um, we in the highlight, it says, if the part-time employee, this was a question about, um, as it related to part-time employees and how they get their time allocated. It was a particular situation within the AAA. There was an ombudsman um, who only worked 13 hours and felt the need to work on the holiday. Um, you, it was um, unclear within our rules about whether it allowed for that employee to work um, and not have to be um, receiving time and a half. So we are suggesting if the part-time employee chooses to work on the holiday, they will not be paid time and a half, but can use the prorated time later in the week. And that is what staff is being recommending. Um, in addition to, um, we are adding on, as it relates to holidays, the second, this is the B part, um, having the um, Columbus Day be um, identified as well as in, Indigenous Day. Um, and that is how the state has it listed on their um, website. Mary, Mary, question on the prorated time. Say if someone scheduled, say it's on Thanksgiving, in obviously a holiday, but someone um, wants to work that day. Say, say they normally would work three hours on the Thursday and they choose to work it. Does that mean that they'll get three hours off at a day later in the week or like within a week? Is that that is. We, that is. And and to be honest with you, I think that was a, the exact scenario is that um, 
one of the staff, Jane Seelig, who works 13 hours, um, felt that the client needed um, to be tended to. Um, we have internally talked about it saying, as manager, David Klein is her manager, or Lila oversees, supervises her. We try to say that they really try to stay away from working on holidays, but if they do feel that it is imperative for the concern of the of, of the client, um, that they would then um, have the following Friday or take that those oh, those prorated time at another date. You know, in the case of a Thursday, if they're already working on the Friday, um, within a week, you know, it's reasonable to be asked that within the week that um, that they take that time, okay. be given that time off. Thank you. Following, are they getting like an extra half time to take as as leave later in the week, or are they they can take the, oh because they're supposed to get paid for three hours, they get paid holiday pay for three hours, and they also get the three hours later in the week. Is that what happens? That is, that is isn't it, Megan? No, you're shaking your head. No, no. So they will not get holiday pay. They'll get normal pay for the hours that they pay. on Sorry. the holiday because right, they're right. choosing to, because it's not required. It's like, again, with these circumstances, it's more of just adding some care, but they are going to get that holiday time allotted that they normally would work that time in a different time. So essentially, if let's say it is three hours or something that's equated to whatever the prorated time is, instead of she she would still be working three less hours but still get paid for that full 13 hours but just at a different time so instead of working the full 13 hours she'd work 10 hours but paid for 13 hours because she can't get she wouldn't get holiday power pay if she actually worked the time correct and so this is a way to give her holiday pay um correct. and I guess in that scenario do we consider it a choice if she thinks the client needs it that day my answer, it is a choice because she's only working 13 hours. Um, if, um, you know, they're, they're, it is, it doesn't happen very frequent. And I think that's where, but it was ambiguous in our last conversation and um, looking at at least clarifying number one, that it, it, number one, that it's not time and a half. That was important to say, because it's, that's what our rules say about working on a holiday. Um, and the, the fact that if, because of the limitation of 13 hours and couldn't adjust the schedule. We just wanted to ensure that they do that and they get the holiday pay, the prorated holiday pay. Are they, are so they obligated? It, if, oh, sorry, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. no, you go ahead, Becky. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, so if a full-time employee works on a holiday, do they get comp time? The answer is they would, but that comes with we would, um, I think it's the extremely sensitive situations with AAA, the fact that there are, um, their work, like there is, there, I cannot envision any full-time employee working on a, on a holiday in any of our situations. I just don't. Um, and as an executive director, I would really, um, I would probably not approve that, um, I think in this case, because we're dealing with long-term care and assisted living care, um, their unique situation um, might entail a specialty. Again, I think it happened once um, over the last couple of years that that happened. Otherwise, it's management. So, Steve, if I could. Yeah. So just a kind of a more of a technical comment. When I read that, I don't think it should say if an employee chooses if management okays, and you tell me, tell me whether that's you or mm. it, it, or, or you know who that is, but I think yeah. it's got to be the management's choice to allow the person more than yeah. the okay. employee's choice. So just yeah. technical, okay. but no, I, I that I think that's correct, um, Lee. Um, as it's always, are I'm sorry. Are they obligated in any way to work? Like is like is it like is the ombudsman no. in any way, shape, or form by? by contract or whatever. No. Okay. No. Right. And, and no. maybe that's the way it gets worded. If management right. elects and the applicant and the employee agrees so that it's not mutual mandatory. agreement. Yeah, mutually agreed upon it or whatever. But I think we got to retain the management right to dictate, not the employee. Thank you, Lee. 
And and just in case there was a concern, I had done research and it and as a part time staff member, we are not required to pay time and a half for a holiday. Um, so that's just another thing that we also confirmed. So, thank you, Megan, because I feel like I should know the answer to that, and I couldn't remember. They change all the time, anyways. So. <laughs> So there was so, the two parts under the there was two parts under the holiday, Stephen. So maybe just take one at a time. Yeah. Um, I think the easier one is just to agree that we will add Indigenous Day um, to the um, to the calendar as the day in addition to Columbus Day to be um, consistent with what how the state of Massachusetts has it listed on their calendar. So with all due respect to Mary, I make a motion to approve both of them with my suggested comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept. I mean, I'll second that, sorry. Can I make um, a suggestion for a friendly amendment? Yes, you um, can. I, I, <laughs> I completely agree with um, what Lee said. I think it needs to be approved ahead of time before the holiday. Mm -hmm. And then also, I think it's a little bit clear or unclear the way it reads at the end. I would say the um, it said the time need to be what made up during the week. I would say within one week of the holiday work, something like that because yeah. it, it sounded days. like it could yeah. be like yeah. if it was a third a Thursday holiday it had to be made up that Friday so I would just make that more clear great yeah you got to work on that wording too because if management and a part-time mutually agree to work well management's not working but so yeah I just got to work on that language. right, right. Yeah. we will we, these will these will eventually need to go to full council for approval so I will get the language from today's meeting Yep. to you um and um so before moving to council we can um continue to um have the right wording just to confirm it's all it's only going to be in the case of a part-time employee mm -hmm. you know, okay. that is right correct right. yeah it could say if management allows and the employee agrees hmm. right so motion and second on the table chairman Okay, do we have a vote? Um, Stephen Santisonio. Accept. Christine Joy. Accept. Lee Hartman. Accept. And Becky Coletta. My dogs will say accept for me. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the last item that we had was a clarification from the last time we met. So since um, we now all have um, OCPC laptops and cell phones. Um, we wanted um, in the highlighted yellow, there is um, when OCPC laptops and cell phones are utilized is for the sole purpose of OCPC work. Any software used needs to be um, to get pre-approval from the manager, executive director and OCPC IT consultant. It is expected of all staff members to always have their laptop and phones on them accessible during work hours. Um, this became a challenge just for clarification. Um, we chatted about it last time. This became a challenge because um, I think that there's been a um, a little bit of lackadaisical um, element of folks having being able to be having access. We do a lot of hybrid work. So this just further helps with as a management tool. Um, there's no like if they don't they get a slap there. But I think we have it in our bylaws. Um, and it will be reinforced with the employees. Yeah. Now, when, my question is, if someone's part-time and they have a, a phone assigned to them and a laptop, is, is it during that their work hours or during the- That is, the it's people? during their- mm -hmm. Okay, they're on. So if they're only working three hours a day, that's only the time that they, it's not the like nine to five. That you know, is like that's correct. Day. Okay. That is correct. And that would just suggest language instead of any and to get just say all software use. I just say all software, not even used. All software needs pre-approval. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Instead of any. Thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't want somebody arguing, well, it's there, but I don't use it. Mm -hmm. I, get rid of to, I don't think to get is needed yet. Based on Stephen's comment, should we say during their work hours? During the employees' work hours or scheduled okay. work hours? Normal. Employees, 
normal work hours scheduled yeah i think employed scheduled work hours would work because some of them are um accommodate the community's time frame so you may be splitting hairs but when it says all software needs should it be all software that um the employee wishes to add maybe to needs their... just it might just say all software period okay. i think needs. i think I think that's what we're aiming for. So all software okay. um, requires use... requires pre -appro pre approval. Okay, because because some software is already preloaded on there, so it's like on, yeah. on someone's someone's laptop. But if it comes from OCPC, I think it's implied that that's already okay. pre approved. That is, and that's gotcha. we okay. we preload them um, with mm -hmm. IT. Mm -hmm. Okay. We want to make a motion to accept the uh, addition. Lee Hartman, move to accept the change as amended. I'll second the motion. Christine Joy. We take a roll call, Mary. Stephen Santasonio. Accept. Christine Joy. Accept. Lee Hartman. Accept. And Rebecca Coletta. Accept. And I think that is all that we have. Mary, there was something I thought from the last meeting that you and I were going to set up a meeting between this that meeting and this meeting to discuss more. I just don't, for my notes, I don't have it. You know, I don't know if it was covered here already. I thought we were going to talk again? about. I, I thought we were going to have a talk about something. You know, I think it was related to the last um, last uh, meeting we had with some of the agenda items. We were just going to touch base on something. I don't have my notes from that to indicate that. You know, we were going to set up a meeting in between you and I. I yeah. just don't remember. That, that, Megan that. and I went through the agenda and some of the recordings, but maybe I'll go back to the recordings. Okay. What I would recommend, um, Mr. Chair, then is um, maybe you and I can set up that meeting just to, again, review separately across the board. And if there's any other items that might come up, okay. I, ideally, the personnel committee should be meeting just once a year. Um, I think in the sense of the, ur the urgent matter that it was last time was the security mm -hmm. issue. Um, and just a just a note about that is um, um, because you have hired someone who's shameless, but I have um, um, because of pushing forward now the um, parking authority now has put in new lightings in the parking lot. They've now put in security cameras. Mm. Um, we've put in security cameras. Um, it doesn't stop the incidences that have been happening around the building, mm. but now, even our security cameras, um, the Brockton Police Department has access to them if they need to. Hmm. Um, it has been, it's, it is not improved. I will just let that yeah. in for the employees. It just has not. Um, but um, a week ago, under my title of the D Downtown Brockton Association, um, actually it was two weeks ago now, we had the state legislators coming in for a tour um and they saw firsthand everything firsthand they heard from other property owners in addition to ourselves um um why state legislators only because there's a very from, from i think all the property owners around here there was a strong need for a day program um and as no that 9c cuts have come and many of the programs have been cut but there is um there was a strong need for um for many more street workers and assistants. So um, it was a fruitful discussion, but um, security cameras um, for the parking lot have gone in and um, they have not been active in two and a half years and lights have been out in the parking lot. So little little wins, but the security, um, so I think what we're, when we held a personnel meeting, it was because of the whole parking um, and the stipend um, and how that was being utilized. I needed to update this committee um, I do talk often to um, the staff members and update them about what things are going on. Um, we will be putting in just for your purposes while I have you. I told Leah I'd be done in a half hour. Um, but the um, we are going to, so we spent about $4,000 on the lights out front, give or take some of that amount. Um, same amount has been um, invested in the cameras. Um, that I have on my phone, just like a regular, I can see what goes on 24 seven. Um, and then we're gonna be investing $5,000. I'm putting a gate on the Montello street side, which will prevent 
um, needle use, you know, there's all activity that goes on in that side, Montello Street side. So um, that gate should be installed, I think, by, um, I'm gonna be in touch with the gentleman by next week. So again, that's the investment. Um, I did um, inform the, the city saying it would be helpful through the parking authority to pay for them to invest into the downtown. And I can be happily report that at least those cameras and um, um, lights are being installed. Sure. Signs around the building, like that said, these properties. They are. Properties is, is, you know, more okay. They are. Oh, yeah, right. They are. Yep. So anyway, I, I don't know what else the other <laughs> items might be, Stephen, but Megan and I will put our heads together okay. and then we'll reach back out to you. I think it was yep. just one. I thought it was just one something we were going to touch just touch on, but it's not, it's not, it's like, it's not pertinent. I just thought it and just triggered my mind when we were talking. So that we were going to meet in between and we never got around to it. So. I'm going to, I'm going to go call a friend, Charlie Kilmer. Do you remember <laughs> what that might be? No. Okay. I remember we'll that conversation too. So I can, I'm sure that it's in our recording so I can okay. listen back to it. Okay. Um, but I know that, you know, what Mary said, not, nothing else needs a vote, but we did talk about just, and you'll see in the minutes, we were talking about one of the requests from staff members was looking into gym memberships. Um, oh, great. yeah. So I did in the, um, in the email I sent out, it has a link to the GIC um, to see, but this member specifically does not his, he's on his wife's insurance. Um, but we were also looking at it and the GIC does not specifically list that, um, gym memberships are included. I'm planning on doing some more research because I know sometimes with that you can apply, you know, if you get the FSA, you can get the refund. Um, so I have to, we haven't really looked at that, but we also said in the meeting last time that it would be discussed at a later date. It wasn't something that was urgent. It was more of just a request. So that's the main reason why it's not in the full um, amendment discussion is because it's something that needs a little bit more research. And I know we also talked about um, taking a look at the fiscal, um, you know, if we were to offer that to members, what that would look like. Megan, can I interrupt for one second? Because I thought, did we send in the email out to the members? the mass for you. Yes. Uh, so we were still investigating the, the, the capacity of mass for you to offer either something through there. So it just was going to take a little bit more digging in our part, but um, the, you know, the good news is I think that through our open parking lot that we have with employees to add items of, you know, they take a look at the, 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 the updated um, bylaws or employee handbook and they have an open dialogue to offer things and suggest things. And that's what we're gonna to continue to utilize that format to bring the items to this committee. So I think unless there's something that Stephen, you and I can remember what we talked about. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it, Mary. No, I wouldn't even go back. I just, I thought, I I just remembered I was gonna mention it before the meeting started. So, but anyway, don't worry about it. Thank you. So I think that was it. That's all that I had. Uh, do we have anybody, any, anything else uh, we, anybody want to bring up? Okay, so we'll get Lee out of here by 11.30. So at this point, I'd like to call this <laughs> me and adjourn this meeting. Um, do I have a... Do I have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Okay. Aye. Okay, Aye. this meeting is officially Aye. adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody guys. next week. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>